Hi everyone, my name is Rebecca and these are my thoughts on culture. The first question asks if I know my heritage. Um, I do. My father uh, gave me some Italian and German genes and my mother passed down some um, Irish and Dutch genes. Other than that, I don't really know much more. My parents were both missionaries, so we basically uh, grew up in a big melting pot of culture. Um, we experienced a lot of different cultures, and it was never really about where we came from. Uh, with my parents specifically, they never really talked about where we came from, or you know, you'd be proud that you're you know German because of this or that. Um, it was all about where we were going and who we were going to see and, and that kind of thing. So I don't really have many stories about my heritage. Um, question number two asks, how is one's race or ethnicity related to their culture? I personally think that especially the way people greet um, has a lot to do with their race and their culture. Um, for instance, Peruvians, they kiss on each cheek when they greet you, just on even if they don't know you. Um, and it's kind of rude if you don't uh, greet them that way. Um, in America, however, it's very different. You know, if I don't know you, don't come up and kiss my cheeks, you know, personal bubble. <laughs> so it's a lot different um, based on um, that example. Um, another example that I had is the way that people dress. Um, this goes back to in chapter two on page 42 when it talks about material goods. Uh, so that changes per race, per culture, different, different ways are more acceptable to dress. Um, for instance, um, like Americans wear really short shorts. That's okay here. Um, however, you know, in another culture, you know, that's probably not as acceptable. Like for instance, some Muslim culture where, you know, you don't want to really show any of your face and any of your legs. Um, um, that is an example um, for um, the how one's race or ethnicity relates to their culture. Um, question number three asks, what impact does art have on culture? I think music has a lot to do with how um, people dance in different cultures. Um, for instance, salsa, salsa music, salsa dancing. <laughs> um, it's a lot like the type of dance um, for a salsa dance requires the type of music to get it all fired up and, you know, salsy. <laughs> so uh, that has a lot, the music has a lot to do with how the salsa dance goes. And then also like classical music, you know, and ballroom dancing is very, very different from salsa dancing. Um, and that's just how um, that type of art, music, influences those types of cultures. Um, the first, fourth question asks me to discuss an example of either ethnocentrism, cultural relativism, or assimilation. Um, I chose cultural relativism because of a specific experience that I had um, when I lived in Peru for a summer. Um, I told you my parents are missionaries. We were um, staying in Peru for the summer in 2001. And uh, specifically on the day that we were uh, supposed to leave is when I really realized that um, I had no idea <laughs> what kind of culture I was living in for a whole three months. Um, so, I mean, I was 13 years old. Uh, I didn't really know much. <laughs> no 13-year-old 13, 13 does. Um, but, um, I remember waking up that morning and going to my neighbor's house and we, uh, you know, we've been living there for three months. We're friends. Uh, you know, I didn't want to say bye, but I went to say, you know, I'll see, I hope to see you later, you know, another time, maybe next year. Um, and I'll never forget, uh, the... I guess vibe in the room when I walked into my neighbor's living room, <clears throat> which was very normal. You don't knock, you just walk right in um, with Peruvians. You just come on in, you know, my house is your house. Um, so I went into their living room and the television was on. And um, the day we were supposed to leave actually is uh, was uh, September 11th. 
And so the TV is on, um, everyone's crowded around the TV. I don't really know what's on the TV um, and it's all in Spanish. So I'm only grasping a little bit of what they're saying, um, which I've since forgotten um, pretty much all of my Spanish. But um, uh, when they realized that I was in the room, they turned around and ran to me and they were crying. And I never, I was like, what is happening? You know, I'll never forget being a 13 year old girl, like, whoa, <laughs> you know, what's going on? Um, they came up to me and they hugged me and they were crying and they were saying how sorry they were. And um, it was like, I, I was kind of freaked out <clears throat> as a 13 year old kid. <laughs> So I finally saw the television and saw that um, the Twin Towers had been hit and that, you know, people were jumping out of buildings and the tower was falling down. And, you know, as a 13 year old, I don't really, you know, I am not really grasping what is happening, except for that that's in America, you know, that's home and this is happening to my people. and. I stood there amidst, you know, three or four people hugging me, talking to me, not really understanding what they're saying because I didn't have my parents who speak much better Spanish than I do. Um, so I'm kind of trying to grasp what they're saying to me and all I get is, you know, I'm so sorry. We understand. We love you. We're, you know, we're here for you. What do you need? You know? And so that is pretty much when my view of different cultures shifted dramatically. I, you know, I was standing there thinking, you know, it's okay. That's not here. You're fine. You know, I wanted to comfort them and tell them that everything was okay. You know, it's, it's over there. You know, it's okay. You're okay. And um, later I learned that they had gone, later that day, I had learned that the Peruvian people had gone through their own terrorist attacks. And um, that really opened my eyes to see how, yes, different, uh, different cultures are, but how really similar we all are. We all, you know, care about each other. And um, they really uh, opened their hearts to me and my family, and we were actually delayed two and a half weeks. We could not get home. I mean, of course. Um, no flights were going in America and we had to live on, you know, or live by from house to house um, because our lease was up for the summer. So we had nowhere to go. We uh, uh, went through the church and different people set us up in different houses in different places with either them or friends they knew or homes they knew of that were vacant or different places that we stayed. And um, they just really showed me and made me look at their culture through their eyes and realize that they had gone through this huge terrorist attack and they had, you know, gotten through it and they were still getting through it. And, and they related to us in that way. And they, and I related to them in that way now. And <clears throat> I think that that is my best example of cultural relativism. Relativism. Um, all right. Until next time.